So today we get a pretty uh, big and exciting new update for the upcoming game Biomutant. You re might remember this uh, first revealed back in 2017 as an upcoming post-apocalyptic kung fu open world action RPG that has a big emphasis on offering a ton of freedom and customization. The game is full of these mutant powers, bionics, and weapons that you can kind of combine to fit whatever your preferred playstyle is, whether you want to be a magic slinging sci freak or a commando jumping straight into the action, or maybe you want to roam around as a sneaky assassin. You can mix and match all of these various elements to kind of make the character you like, not only the playstyle, but also visually, which kind of is the more interesting part of this game to me personally, just the, the really unique look and style, I guess, especially if you like playing as furry animals. Uh, the developer had come out and said that they took a lot of inspiration in making this game from sources like Kung Fu Panda, Ratchet and Clank, a lot of modern open world games, and a combat system that's heavily inspired by the likes of Devil May Cry and the Arkham game series. Early footage uh, has really showed a lot of promise. This thing caught my eye almost immediately uh, way back in 2017. Now originally when we first heard about it, it was actually planned to release the following year. It was supposed to come out in 2018, then it got pushed back to 2019. That year came and went with no updates about the game, and then early on in 2020 the developers said that they were still working hard to make it the best game it could be that they're in the final stages of development and they won't actually have a release date until they're confident they can hit it. Halfway through 2020, we also got a bunch of new details and gameplay footage for Biomutant, but we still didn't have a release date that is until now. Here we are early in 2021 and Biomutant now not only has an official release date, but we've got a bunch of new information and details about the game and how development's been going and everything. So the game is actually going to be coming out uh, uh, really soon in May and I want to cover all of this new information that we have about Biomutant and everything that you need to know because I'm really hoping and I'm keeping my fingers crossed for this one we've had enough disappointment in, in recent times like I really want Biomutant to turn out good uh, so I want to jump into all of that but before we do we got a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skyforge this is a free-to-play sci-fi fantasy MMO that features a dynamic action combat system System with combo attacks and a variety of weapons and skills to choose from. There are 18 unique classes that you can swap between on the fly depending on what you're doing, and a variety of both PvE and PvP content in over 100 different locations for you to explore. Now Skyforge will actually be available for the first time to download and play for free on the Nintendo Switch starting on February the 4th. There are starter, deluxe, and ultimate bundles on the Nintendo eShop which do include a bunch of goodies as well as a two-day head start, but for anybody who completes a tutorial before March the 6th, there will be some exclusive time-limited launch gifts available to you. Once again, you can download and play Skyforge for free. There's no Nintendo Switch Online subscription required. And if you like what you see and you're interested in checking it out, go ahead and click on the link in the description below. Okay, so I want to again jump into all of the new details and information we have about Biomutant. But um, I do want to start off with a bit of a refresher if you haven't paying too close attention to this game. So they're calling Biomutant once more this open world post-apocalyptic kung fu RPG with a unique martial arts style combat system. Now the game does appear to have a lot of what you might expect from open world games and action RPGs, but with their own unique Biomutant twist. It's not just the visuals, they're kind of um, adding some of their own uh, pizzazz to this game, I guess. So for starters, you can make your very own character like you can in a lot of RPGs. It's going to be some combination of these various furry creatures. You could look like a, a rabbit, a raccoon, a squirrel, a panda, any sort of rodent. It seems you can make kind of any combination, any amalgamation of these things. The game features these six different tribes, which each represent kind of this DNA strand, and you can morph your character into uh, whatever you want by combining elements elements of each of these tribes. Uh, interestingly though, not only will your uh, appearance change, but this will also affect your stats. So for example, if you make this super buff warrior creature, you're not going to have a lot of base intelligence by default. Although as you play the game, you can further morph, morph an upgrade to gain more or less of whatever you like. You're also going to start off by picking a class similar to traditional RPG roles, but again with that biomutant twist, like for example, there's the 
Psy Freak, which is this magic user, or the Commando, which is an aggressive fighter. And whatever class you pick, what it dictates is your starting gear and weapon, but not locking you and confining you into that role as you move forward, because as you progress through the game, you're going to gain access to new combat styles by defeating certain enemies, completing various objectives, or just learning directly from what they're calling these wushu masters. So no matter what look you have or what class you pick at the start, you can change your character's abilities as well as their appearance with these powerful mutations or these bionic prosthetics and any weapons that you might find as you play. I, they gave some examples of how this might work. So if you go out there in the world and you're exposed to this biocontamination, this will unlock the turtle form ability or this special mucus bubble. Or maybe you get exposed to some radioactivity by traveling through these underground bunkers that will alter your mind, unlocking access to these psi mutations like telekinesis or levitation. You could grow claws, sprout wings, or even just attach a robotic leg for super jumping power. There's tons of alterations that you can make to your character to alter again, not only the appearance, but the, the skills you have access to and the play style and just a lot of really cool and interesting potential, which of course all plays into the combat system. It is heavily martial arts inspired, and they say that they aim to deliver uh, this freedom of movement while combining various shooting, melee, and mutant powers with the abilities of your choosing. As I mentioned earlier, combat has taken heavy inspiration from the likes of games like Devil May Cry and the Arkham series, and you can really see that in the gameplay videos we've had so far. There's a ton of like dashing and bouncing around, jumping off of enemies, double jumping, a melee combat system that seems to have all sorts of uh, combo potentials, and again, there's the melee as well as ranged weapons and any of these abilities and mutations that you unlock, like everything that I just mentioned earlier. Combat in the game looks really cool because of the diversity and all of the potential that it appears to have. Besides the combat, your character, the classes, the game is also going to have this extensive crafting system. They say that you can combine whatever parts you find in the world to make your weapons. So you could find this massive toothbrush, you attach this handle to it and a couple of spikes, and all of a sudden you've got this brand new brutal melee weapon. You can take uh, various range weapons like a revolver or a rifle or a shotgun, for example, and add modifications like you could add corkscrews or this battery powered chainsaw module. They say that there are going to be millions of potential combinations between the melee and ranged weapons and whatever bits and pieces and modifications that you find. And beyond the weapons, you're also going to have access to crafting gear, things like chest, shoulder and helmet pieces, all of which can also play into these survival mechanics. You're going to need gear to combat the elements in the game. So you might need this gas mask and an oxygen tank if you want to explore the area, the game's dead zone areas. Or you'll need these thermal resistant clothes for venturing into the frozen areas or protective gear uh, for taking on any of these biocontaminated creatures. There's also going to be unique NPCs that you can find in the game that can make you special things like bionic wings or a jump pack, or they can even modify your automation sidekick. Uh, and all of this is set in this really coolly styled post-apocalyptic universe. The basic premise of the game is there's this massive tree of life in the center and is under attack and slowly dying. And what you have to do is follow its massive roots. On each of them, there's this giant boss that you have to defeat, but you're going to have to go through some sort of process to be able to defeat them. We're assuming like upgrading your character, getting new skills, all of that. The whole world, they say, is filled with these fantastic creatures and places to discover, dangerous factions and areas to navigate. And it's just a big colorful world that you can explore with things like mechs, paragliders, balloons, there are mounts and jet skis. And you'll get to explore areas like the dying wildlands, the tunnels and bunker networks beneath the underworld. You could go up the mountains or travel out into the archipelago. There will be d diverse biomes and things for you to see. So that's a basic recap of what is Biomutant. Now I want to dive into the new information that we just recently got actually a couple days ago. Uh, a new interview done with IGN, uh, Biomutants studio lead Stefan Jungvist, I hope I said that right, I'm as close as I could get, uh, he dove into what the team has been up to and working on since 2019. That includes expanding upon the game's features, its story, as well as squashing bugs. So he said that over the past couple of years, they've worked to make the game bigger and more complex. One of the biggest things, though, is that they've put a lot of time into fixing bugs so that it can be as polished.
polished as possible. In fact, apparently, most of the past year of development has been almost exclusively devoted to bug fixing. He said that it's uh, been a huge amount of work for the QA team because it's not easy in an open world game to find all of those bugs. And once they've been found, they of course have to fix them. And that's especially challenging because it's a small team. The game's developer is a studio called Experiment 101. And apparently, as of now, the studio consists of about 20 people. That is a small amount of people to make a big open world game. Now, he's, he went on to say that they don't expect the game to be 100% bug free, especially given that it's an open world with a lot of moving pieces. There are warring tribes, these factions that fight against each other, interacting constantly. There are these conquerable outposts and various roaming creatures. Even with all of that happening, they do want to remove anything game breaking that would really ruin the experience for players. And beyond bugs, they've also been doing a lot of other things things. They've been adding a lot more story to the game. The script went from roughly 85,000 words at the end of 2019 to now nearly 250,000 words. And part of all of those extra words involved the game's reactive karma system, where the NPC dialogue that you have will change depending on whatever your allegiance is to the light or the dark. They also made improvements to the game's t tutorial to help introduce players to Biomune's various systems. And they say that the game's also going to be available in 13 different languages and is fully voiced in 10. And part of the reason apparently that they stepped back and were so quiet during all of 2019 and most of 2020 was to just focus on improving the game while also trying to avoid crunch and burnout. They're really taking the the game will be ready when it's done approach and apparently their publisher THQ Nordic has been happy to oblige. Uh, when talking about crunch the studio head said that he says he thinks it's part of the DNA of the studio to not crunch crunch and that's why it they've kind of been taking their time and they've been quiet but moving forward towards release they are prepared to do a little bit of it but they're not going to make it a constant thing because it will kill you <laughs> and yeah i think uh, at this point with all of the stories we've been hearing about crunch in the video game industry leading up to and after release of games uh any steps to mitigate that and ensure just the uh, mental and physical health of the people working on it you want people making these things to be in a good place mentally and physically because it's going to ultimately lead to, I think, the best work being done. So not having these crazy time constraints or these super insane deadlines and focusing on just making the game good and a healthy manner, that's totally the way to go. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we now have an official release date. The game will be launching on May the 25th and is coming to the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It is also planned to release apparently on next-gen consoles, but since it was mostly developed on prior gen, that's what they're focusing on to start. So I'm not sure if it's going to be playable immediately on next gen, maybe some sort of cross play or whatever upgrade path, something's going to happen. Either way, um, I have to say that initially right out the gate, there was something about Biomutant that had like an instant appeal to me. I was really drawn to what they were showing for the game. The idea of this open world action RPG that's heavily Kung Fu inspired with its combat system and all of the various character and crafting customization that it has is just really interesting. And again, I really Really like the look I, there's a huge appeal to me to the world that they're building now the size of the game you know it's it is eight kilometers squared we found out last year which isn't massive it's not really the scale of some really big open world games but i think if uh, playing a lot of open world games has taught me anything i don't need the game to take an hour or two to travel from one end to the other for it to be a good game if anything there have been a lot of open world games that i've felt in recent years have been too big there's just been it seems like a strange complaint but there's just almost, I would rather it be a little more condensed, but a more interesting experience and world to explore. So maybe, hopefully, that's what they deliver. And I'm also glad that they've been focusing on making sure the game's performance and the bugs are taken care of first and foremost. If you can release a bug, relatively bug-free game, or at least a serious bug game, get rid of those. Little bugs in an open world game are almost to be expected, but get rid of the big things and just deliver on, I guess, everything that they've talked about um, I think they could have a winner. The people are saying that this game is like potentially a cult classic. I don't know how you come up with that. <laughs> I don't know how you make that decision before the thing's ever been playable or released. But I also 
kind of get where they're coming from. I might have even said that at some point in the past. Like, I kind of get it because there's just something about this thing that's very, very appealing uh, right, right away. So fingers crossed, hope it delivers. There's the update, the 2021 update for Biomutant. Um, apparently there will be more information as we get closer to this May launch date. There's probably gonna be more videos and details released as they're wrapping up development, going gold and whatever. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that. And anytime anything big comes along, um, I'll probably make another video covering it. I just want to, it's been long enough since we've talked about Biomutant and then this was big enough news that I figured it warranted a new video. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Biomutant 2021 update and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy.